going on everybody thank you so much for watching Vaz survival man I just got out of the car haven't even found a campsite yet haven't put on any bug spray and immediately the second that I get out of the car to try to look for a campsite already finding chanterelles look at this oh my god oh that's a beauty this one's in better condition this one's big look at this beautiful so look at that I am already excited haven't even found a campsite yet but while looking for one bam we're already finding chanterelles I have a very good feeling about this stay tuned thanks so much for watching let's see how many pounds of chanterelles we're gonna find this time yeah okay these are fresh looking the rest of these they're actually already kind of rotting either that or the bugs and stuff already got to them so I'm not going to take these home but look at that I pretty much found the most secluded campsite there's a bunch of campsites off of this road that are free they're very very far apart and I can see why this was one of the only ones that wasn't available so I'm deep in the backwoods but if I needed help about a quarter of a mile maybe half a mile is the next campground look at this garbage right here so a lot of people probably drove down that road and thought oh no we cannot camp here as long as I'm careful and I go over this nice and fast so with not a lot of time I got a couple of hours before the Sun goes down this is where I'm camping this is my main base and then I'm gonna be carefully safely going into the backwoods foraging for mushroom foraging for edibles and I already see some stuff check it out we already got clover right here or wood sorrel they're both related you can eat this it's got vitamin C we got some plantain right here I'm already seeing some good edible stuff all right you may wonder why does that look a little sloppy because one of my tent poles broke but luckily I always bring extra tent poles and while it didn't fit perfectly at least I got the tent up I got a cot in there cuz seriously who likes sleeping on the ground got bad knees I'm gonna go over this very fast the Sun's about to go down I laid out my crucial items before it gets dark to make sure that I have it a GPS locator beacon if I got severely hurt especially since I'm on blood thinners you want one of these a lantern for the dock purchased this at Walmart but guess what it's fantastic it's the best first aid kit I ever purchased if you go out into New England camping in the summer without some bug spray you are going to be suffering now it's bear country and if a bear comes around here I definitely got a chance to scare the living crap out of it I got a flare it's really hard for these things to not fall down and, and look all yeah I'm cool I got a foghorn I'm not gonna press it because it's super loud I got some bear mace I got a multi-tool it's got a small hatchet it's got pliers it's like a glorified Swedish army knife I got a bundle of rope I already collected some dry god dang I already collected some dry birch bark when it starts to get dark and I collect wood I will be able to get a fire easy peasy where's the ferro rod speaking of that there it is it fell off the log a ferro rod I also brought a lighter because don't be a ding dong you always need to bring a lighter make sure you got your headlamp and your flashlights all set before it gets dark I got my trusty trusty Swedish Mora knife and I got a nice handsaw to cut wood preparation folks make sure you get all your stuff in a good spot before it gets dark otherwise you'll be fumbling around and then feeling like a clown yeah 
Ah, oh, god damn it. It's seven o'clock. I got at least an hour before it's pitch black. Remember that in the wilderness it gets darker faster. I already gathered some wood. I got my tinder bundle ready. I got my flashlights and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go and scout for some chanterelles, but I'm not gonna pick them yet. Tomorrow morning I'm gonna wake up and then I'm gonna pick them so that way they're as fresh as possible. That way when I go home tomorrow, I'll be able to have them very fresh, be able to process them, cook a few, maybe I'll eat some tomorrow in front of you, and then freeze and preserve the rest. And then in a little while, you see me at the fire. We'll get a fire going with the ferro rod. I'll play a little guitar. I'll talk some bullshit, so stay tuned. Weird not being here without my buddy Perulo. This is where we found chanterelles. 30 seconds into the woods and check it out. Oh, it's so hard not to pick them. But we got some chanterelles here. I'm coming back for you, baby. I'm coming back for you, baby. Oh my God. I remember this dead tree and we found a whole bunch of chanterelles and I can see them. I can see them already. Oh yeah. I love it. And there should be more over yonder. It's interesting. I came here at the same exact time last year. They were all extremely fresh. I can already tell that some of them are already shit in the bed. But I'll be able to come back tomorrow, pick these and show you guys a huge bounty of chanterelles. Hopefully we can match last year's. Ooh. I'm seeing chanterelles and puffballs. So tough not to pick them already, but it is smart to wait until tomorrow morning so that way they're as fresh as possible. You know what I mean? I could pick them now, but I just figured fresh. Fresh is good. I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, I found some more chanterelles. Yeah! There's another beauty. And another beauty. You got to be careful. One, your footing. Especially when you're a ding-dong trying to film stuff. It's more important for me to not hurt myself, so I'm always paying attention to my footing, so I apologize if the camera's not great. My safety is more important. Also, a lot of mushroom foragers, as well as hunters and hikers, are some of the highest probability people that get lost. The good thing is, is that I'm just staying near the river. The river's to my right, so I know I'll be able to turn around. It'll be a piece of cake. If you're searching in the woods, Oh, yeah. If you're searching in the woods away from the water, it's a little different. But luckily, I got the water right next to me. I think I see more chanterelles here. Yeah. Let me use my head. And let me go back towards the river instead of thinking like, oh, I'll go this way. I'll find the road. Nope. Head back toward the river. Come back the same way you came so that way... You don't get yourself lost or in trouble because the sun's going down. And I didn't bring uh, my survival items. That's that's what happened. I didn't bring my survival items, but I'm super psyched. Tomorrow I'll be able to get at least 50% of those chanterelles and be able to harvest them and cook them in an omelet. Yeah! I gathered a bunch of white birch bark and yellow birch bark. I have a lighter, but say your, say your lighter fell in the river, got all wet. If you got a ferro rod, you'll always be able to get a fire in the northeast. Usually you can find yourself some birch bark and boom, two strikes. That's all you need. Plenty of small kindling. There we go. I got no worries at all. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Am 
Now it's time to make some Portuguese shooties. This will also keep the bugs away. Some beautiful Portuguese shudisu. Of course it's awesome to have gourmet meals. But you want to keep it nice and light and simple. So buy yourself a little bit of sausage. Have yourself this little metal meat holder grade thingy. Whatever the hell you call it. Cook it over the fire. Put a big rock over it to hold it. Churn it over a couple times. Get yourself a little loaf of bread. Boom. You got yourself dinner. Beautiful fire. Something that I like doing periodically in bear country. You over there. Get away from there. You over there. Get away from there. Just periodically making a little noise. If you're in bear country, it's very good to be loud. Yo, get away from there. It's kind of windy. That way, you don't have to wait for a bear to come around. You just say, get out of there. You, get out of there. And I want to thank my, my cousin Franco Alves. Because he used to say, you over there. Get away from there. And I say that when I'm in bear country. To make sure that these dudes are scared of me. They're scared. Like friggin' people used to be scared of Whitey Bulger. The Whitey Bulger of, of the woods over here. It's time to play some guitar. Time for bed. Looks kind of scary and depressing. Ooh. All right, huh? You guys want to tell some ghost stories? There was once a vampire. His name was Bill. Oh, I'm sorry, that's HBO's True Blood from a long time ago. It's funny how psychologically you feel safe, but it's just a small, thin amount of fabric, and it's bear country, so if a crazy predator wanted to, they could kind of rip this open and eat you alive. For the most part, if I set off that foghorn or that flare or that bear mace, I'm good to go so I can comfortably sleep and dream about vampires and random stuff and i'm upset because i just felt a bug on me meaning that i didn't close that enough dog on it it's sleepy times good morning everybody here we go now it's time to go ahead and pick the chanterelles it rained last night i got up i pretty much just packed my stuff had a little bit of coffee had a couple of boiled eggs and now I'm off to get the chanterelles let's see how many we can find uh, that one's nice and fresh right there beauty into the pot it goes or into the bag it goes. You got the false gills. Little divot. That one's good. Look at this guy hiding here. That guy looks pretty fresh. 
Oh, yeah, that's a beauty. Absolute beauty. It's good to leave a few around so that way the spores can keep on making it so they produce here every year. This one looks nice and fresh, nice and dry. Perfect. You got a beauty right here. Oh, yeah. Oh. That might be the most beautiful one right there. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. And, oh, there's one hiding under a leaf there. Oh, I can sometimes just, oh, this one's beautiful too. Not as many ripe ones as last time, like perfect, but that right there is nice and dry and beautiful. Interesting. Oh, wow, this one's got a strong stem. Oh, look at that, it's two of them. Yes, mmm. Another one. This one's not good. That one's decent. I think I'll take that one home. The way to be able to tell if it's false gills is gills, if you run your finger along, it's gonna flake right off. These, they stay pretty intact, you see? And then you got the little divot going on in here with that interesting little shape. Small little stems. The inside will be white and fleshy. A lot of people say it smells like apricots. I know I don't have some type of primitive Native American looking cool basket. I got a shopping bag, but look. Ooh. So, before going over to the car, decided to come over to the other side of the river and I got a few little guys. Look at these. Hello. I'm gonna leave those to grow. Hello. I'd say about a half a pound. We got about a half a pound here. This trip is coming to an end. I didn't forage as many as last year but I counted 32 beautiful chanterelles and I consider that a victory. And these are some of the most expensive mushrooms in the world because you can't produce them in a factory or, or anywhere. They're only found in nature. You find them growing on the ground, never really on decaying wood. And in my experience, you find them near babbling brooks or rivers. I went and tried to search near a pond. No bueno, here comes the wind picking up. It was a beautiful time. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And never pick chanterelles or mushrooms unless you definitely know what you're doing and you can positively identify them. Thanks for watching.